people sometimes say, oh, you're, you're just like a real radio station. And I always say, we are a real radio station. We're a radio station that just doesn't happen to have a broadcast signal yet. I'm Sean Campbell. I'm the founder and general manager of Trip Radio in Chicago. We decided to start CHIRP in the summer of 2007. The whole reason that I decided that I wanted to start a truly independent radio station was because I had worked at a number of other stations, commercial, public, uh, non-commercial, and what it really came down to was whoever controlled the license controlled the fate of the station. And I'd had a couple of bad experiences where I'd really poured my heart and soul into a radio station only to have it thwarted by the owners. And I had some great people who were working for me at that point at another community radio station here in Chicago. So once that happened, I talked to them and I said, you know, we should really start something that's truly independent, something of our own. That group ended up being the founding CHIRP Board of Directors. And from there, we recruited a bunch of volunteers. We already had some volunteers in place from this other station. So from the start, we had about 75 volunteers who were interested. And initially we thought we were going to wait and try to apply for a low power FM broadcast license and have to lobby and change, change federal law and everything before we'd be able to do that. And we had such a great group of people and they were so engaged that after about six months of this, we thought, well, there's no reason not to start the station now and start as an online station and continue our work um, to increase access for low power FM. And, hopefully eventually be able to apply for a license, but as the um, internet radio landscape was changing so much uh, and listenership was growing by leaps and bounds, we decided, hey, it just makes sense to start it that way. We were really lucky because we had so many people that we were able to launch and, and start from 6 a.m. to midnight um, from the very start. But it's really cheap, it's really easy. You don't have to be super tech savvy to do it. Um, pretty basic and you can grow it as you go. You can get a mixer. You can get you know whatever else you want. If you want turntables, if you want CD players, you can do that. But basically, you can have a computer with a microphone, and that's kind of all it takes to get started. We are an extremely local radio station. We uh, invite people from all over the country and all over the world to listen. But when they do, it's going to be really clear that we have a really firm sense of place in Chicago. The shows that we're talking about are local shows. Um, the, when we talk about local music, we play at least two to three Chicago artists every hour. Uh, we have a real commitment to Chicago. We weren't able to apply for a broadcast license because the way the low power FM service was created, there was no one in any of the top 50 markets who were eligible to apply because they said the dial was too congested in big cities. So we actually did work on legislation with a bunch of national partners like Prometheus Radio Project and the Future of Music Coalition. To expand that, we passed our bill in 2010, the Local Community Radio Act, and just this year, the FCC is finally opening up a new application window for low power FMs that will actually include people in big cities like Chicago. So we'll be able to apply for a broadcast license this October. We're really excited about it. I don't think that Pandora, I don't think that Spotify, I don't think these services are radio stations. So it bothers me when people even refer, people refer to, to Pandora as radio. It's not, it's, uh, Pandora is a great service that will introduce you to music that's similar to music you already like. It's not going to provide you with any information about the music that you're hearing. It's not going to introduce you to something that's completely out of left field that you have no idea that you like and then tell you a little bit about it. So what we believe and what you know has been borne out in our experience so far is that people still do want curated content and they do want that personal relationship that radio is so good at doing when it's done well. And so much broadcast radio and commercial radio has abandoned the strengths of radio, which are its localism and its immediacy. The fact that we're always live um, you know, none of our shows are pre-recorded. There's always a DJ here in the studio who you can interact with. You can make requests. You can ask about a song if you heard something that you liked. You can, you know, try to find out more. Um, the DJ is going to tell you about shows that are coming up in town. I mean, we're really old school. We give away tickets. We do a lot of local announcements of events. And it is that connection to community. 
um, and getting to know that person who's on the other end, uh, feeling like you know that person, learning about their personality and their likes and dislikes. It's that human connection that we deliver and um, people really still enjoy that and I, I think that they miss that in a, a lot of commercial radio and that's, that's something we're trying to deliver.